Listen to that again. Come on, George, talk to us. Good boy. So we started off with George again. All right, George, settle down there, boy. That's him settling down. Good boy. You want to talk? Want to, want, to, want to be my background noise? A little purr in talking. Purr talk. All right, this will be kind of a one of my shorter videos to give you a precursor to an hour-long video, which I call 20-minute videos. So I'm going to bring this picture over here. So HDG stands for hot dogs um, on the ground. Or oh, does it stand for heading? All right, this is 80 degrees heading. This is related to, in relationship to the uh, uh, the vessel itself, the vessel that's doing the looking, uh, the, the ROV. And I believe it's center line of the vessel. So if it was to spin um, to the right, turn clockwise, then a new heading would be that. At this point, I freeze and I can see that the heading, well, on the screen says 80 degrees. And 80 would be right about there. If they kept straight at 80 degrees heading, it would be there. Let's, let's take note of that. This would, so this tells me this is at an 80 degree heading. This is the tail. As I look at the map over here, it says tail. I'm sorry if that's in the way a little bit. I'll move it just a little bit. It says tail. Let's put that back. It says 80 degree heading from here to here. And it's the short version. This is 140 meters. A lot of you guys are um, to use a metric system, and I'm sorry for not uh, using it more frequently with you. The conversion is 459 feet. Now I'll give you a hint. The skids appear, present as parallel, but skid debris might be the lead weights. The skids do not separate from the, uh, um, the legs. So to get the legs apart and the skids, uh, the skids here without the legs is, uh, you know, a little bit problematic. I think it's here. It says black rectangular curved debris, which is very interesting. Rectangular curved debris. That could be part of your uh, delamination. But the skids would have to, the carbon fiber debris uh, would have to be figured out. And I've got, like I said, an hour plus video on this. So if this orientation you're looking at, um, here's your orientation here. Here's this north above us. So everything is north. If I were to grab this line, move it over here, everything that's north, that's south, west, and east. I'll give you a sort of a hint. Uh, the search pattern was below to the right, southeast, and yet all the debris was here, northwest. This is before they found the vessel. This is when they were doing the planes. They were searching this uh, area and thinking of drift, and it was southwest. Once they found this, they focused um, over uh, two vessels overlapping, um, surveying the field uh, with their two vessels. This is what they came up with. With that said, I can use the headings that's presented to us and determine where everything is. I can also use, um, very easily use this. This tells me exactly where it is. This piece, for example, the heading is nine degrees. It says that this is the top of the vessel. Sorry, let me, my, my, air, my, my um, um, mouse, that can look funny. If you hear, George is rubbing the mic if you're hearing a little, little something rubbing against the mic. All right, um, George is always with me. George is my, my boy. So this heading is nine degrees, and it's saying that that's the, um, the, end of the, the end capsule, which we know is the rear, and that's the top. So I can come over here and look at the end capsule, end caps, end capsule, and the heading is nine degrees. I come up here, and nine degrees is just almost, well, zero is here. So where's my nine? Do I have a nine? I didn't put the nine in. But the nine would be the vessels looking in this direction and looking at this direction, to look, observing the capsule. So looking at that direction, observing the capsule, you'd be looking at the top and this would feather off that direction to your left. So you'd be looking at it from, from the north direction, looking south on a heading of nine degrees and you would see this. So as I put this over here, and uh, I'll, I'll do the overlay for you. Not this video it takes much longer. I'll put the capsule orientation for you. So that would be that capsule facing the end cap is here and to the left would be the part of the dome going out that way. Hmm. But yet they put capsule here and end caps over here. 
So I would have to say the end caps is here, and this is comma capsules, so the two of them together. So we would put the end cap here. As you can see, there is no real dot there. It's just comma. So it's not necessarily lining up with the word capsule. End caps, last capsule. They put them, they group them together. So all these go overlap here, but I don't want to, for, post, for uh, ease of looking, I put it like this. Um, so you can see that when the ships, when the vessel, the uh, ROV is in certain angles, this is how its field of view looks from that direction. So it's nine degrees here. So here is nine degrees roughly. Um, let me give you a different color on that. So I'll give you a rough, a rough nine degrees. And let's go with uh, that one. And somewhere about there is nine degrees. And so I would put that down there like that. And this would be our nine degrees field of view as we're looking at it. And so the end capsule would, your field of view, of course, I don't know the distortion we're looking at. This, looking at the lighting, um, I would say this is away from us. As you can see, it's away from the ring. And that's the top. Um, there's the starboard side with the sheared off. Uh, bracket I talked about in another video but take note of this is the exact location so I can overlap this 41 degrees 44 minutes and the rest in seconds 49 degrees 56 minutes and 57 since some change in some seconds I can overlap that to this location now the tail cone over here the tail section that's awesome since you see that there and there it is again Oh, that's that's gonna be awesome. So now I'll be able to map you, see uh, map you where the uh, tail cone is. There we go. Yeah. Oh, right. Wow. Oh. Right. This doesn't actually have the position on it. Hmm. But I can use that number here, and I can tell you where this is. I can give you that number that's not disclosed. I'll put the mic back over here now that he moved away. I can give you that number now that it's not, it's not disclosed to us because this number is disclosed. I can find this number. And it takes time, guys, to put these videos together. I, I see some of your comments. I see a couple of people quite salty um, that I won't go along with the main narrative that he just built a wrong vessel and it's just that's it. you got to realize that the carbon fiber is uh, will be the way of the future. Um, will, will be the way of the future. I don't know about these depths. And the, the cost prohibitive, easy just to build in, in, in steel. But at these depths, what's the point anyway? You can use an ROV to do all your work. You remotely operated is the way to go anyway. It's safer, no humans, you know, you can keep it working 24 hours as long as the vessel can, you know, stay with it out of maintenance. Let's see, George, I have two paws on me right now, and he's got his eyes closed. Two of his front paws grabbing my uh, arm. He says, my one arm is, I've got my hand, my fingers crossed in front of you. Uh, knocked in like a it's almost like a prayer and position so the uh, um, so I can tell you where this is in relationship to that if you look at the, the I'm gonna have to take my hand away George sorry I need that right hand don't get upset so from here to here yeah this mouse <sighs> so from here um, yeah from here to here this end cap, that distance. And I don't want to cover the dot. That's why I pushed it over there. But let's do that. Just pull it over a little bit. It's 107 meters, which is 351 feet. Just this alone, the skids alone, are approximately, the vessel's approximately 9 foot, 2 foot wide. I think they measured it from the outside to outside. And the skids are approximately 8 feet, 8 feet apart from each other. When I do the math, deducting um, uh, the eight foot, I come to get this spread of 22 meters from those two skids, considering they are the skids. I need photographs of them. I don't have those yet, but I'm, uh, I'm working on the assumption that those are the skids, not the land, not the legs, not the uprights. But maybe they are. But if they are, it makes it a lot easier. This is this 72. This is a 22 meter spread, and that's approximately 72. 
um, feet. That's minus the eight feet that they automatically were spread apart. That gives me an elevation of about 2,000 feet above the sea level seabed, or they like to call it the ocean beach. Um, and that would give us the, them departing from the vessel um, without a crossbar connecting the two of them. Remember, there's a crossbar there. Um, and so that would give it not connecting. Somehow that, that connection is, is broken. There's only four bolts total holding on the two skids onto the legs. Um, this gives us uh, a one degree inclination from release. And that release would get us, a, we would have to be 2,000 feet up to get a 22 meter spread minus the eight foot. So I think they were climbing. And now this, this was down at the deck when they released the legs. Well, then we would get it much closer and it wouldn't be so uniform, uh, presented as uniform. I need photographs of this. I really don't know what it looks like. They look like two skis sticking in the sand. That would be awesome. Are they laying down? I, I don't know. Um, how did the, where are the, uh, the little, little uh, carbon fiber and metal legs that, that can release, where are they? Well, there's some undercarriage strapping here, the thrusters, and I talk, I'll talk about that more, and the thrusters down here times two. One of them is called truster, not not thruster, but I'm assuming it's a thruster and not a, it's just a spelling error, which I make a lot of. Um, and so the, you got two thrusters over here, um, thruster here and a thruster and drop weight tray here. Now this could be on one side of the vessel and this is the other side of the vessel. The higher up I go, the more I can get this spread, such as the carbon fiber debris here, carbon fiber debris here, and I would have to get releasing in stages. That is, I would have to get them uh, first dropping weights as they stated. Now we have lost communications numerous times in this dive, so we're not going to, I'm not going to assume that they imploded at this location. In fact, there's nothing that proves that. TGT-1 is not identified to what this TG, maybe target one. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, at one point I thought it was a uh, um, segment, SGT, and then I realized it's TGT. So it's uh, uh, maybe target one, and here's target two, and there's a target, another target around here, target one, target two, and there's target uh, apparent, present, I think it's target one again, uh, or TGT um, one, TGT two, and interesting, there is a difference here. There's a capital T here. There's a lowercase t here. I do do stuff like this myself, and it can have different meanings. My capitals and my lower cases that I that I know what it means, even if I underline. Um, a letter it would have a different meaning that I would know about so like your own shorthand so I don't know if this is purposely done the uh, the capital T here and lowercase t here um, this says debris in front of it this just says um, thruster it says undercarriage strapping and then it has another dot with the designation TG2 uh, TG1 T, TGT1 and this is capital TGT2 or, or is it like a truster here? Um, is it his version of a truster? Is this a, is he, is it code for this, the forward thruster going forward and the one that goes on the top going up and down, north and south, uh, elevation wise? Is that what that, what that is? Is that his code for thruster? And is this the thruster mount? Um, but not the thruster. Um, and where and the and the field the search field only went here and it went out over here incidentally or oddly but it doesn't show it going the more debris like it didn't recover the other thrusters so that other thruster um, that's orientation did it get rolled into the uh, implosion and crushed so remember there's another thruster or truster uh, if you'd like to code it. Uh, or just misspelling um, that it, it would so we got one thruster two thrusters and drop weight tray and it's a thruster mount so we're missing two thrusters or thrusters and that could be on that part of the vessel where where it buckles in and in comes the uh, front dome and it along with crushing the, the uh, oxygen tanks those two thrusters also get smashed into the back inside in the vessel. 
So that could account for why they're not part of this uh, debris field as where are they? Um, but I also have the issue of the white housing. See the uh, white debris, white, white debris here. This is more than likely the, um, we know it's not the rear. So it's more than likely, hold on, let's bring this over. So we know it's not this. This is present, presented to us. So it's more than likely the, um, the uh, shroud for the, uh, the cowling for the, uh, the, um, where the airbag system was. Now it, it works, and one of my, one of my, um, it works in one of my, um, uh, setups that I did this together. Oh, I gotta go, guys. Um, my other, I gotta go. Take care. Love you guys, and please support the cats. Don't support me. Don't, you know, you can support me by supporting the cats, but don't, don't send any money for me personally. I don't need any money personally, but the cat love is great. You're feeding the strays outside, two raccoons, cat, and Georgie, let's see if we can get them to say hello, goodbye to us. Let's see. Hey, George, your turn. Listen to that. Thank you, Georgie. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. Take care, guys. Love you. Bye.